Hey guys, so thank you so much for joining me on this Resolve Weddings course. We're going to look at DaVinci Resolve specifically for wedding films and we're going to jump right in now by having a look at the edit page. This is where we're going to cut and create the wedding film, do the edit before going into the colouring section. And if you ever use something like Final Cut or Premiere, it's going to be quite familiar to you. Um, when you're getting to grips with it, it can be a little bit confusing, but it's going to make sense quite quickly and we're going to jump right in now. All right, so I'm going to start a new project. Let's call this First Wedding Film. OK, so we're in the edit page. You can tell that by this little symbol at the bottom. This panel is how we access the different pages. At the top, we can access a few settings. Preferences quite useful for accessing our output audio. You can choose the headphones that you're working with. Project Manager is where we can access our different projects. Project Settings is where we can access a few bits of information about the current project. The timeline resolution is quite important, guys. We want to keep this in HD while we're editing, that's going to make things run nice and smoothly. If we're in 4K, it can slow the process down a little bit. Proxy media is good to put that at half, I find. If your computer's running a bit slow, you could try a quarter, but normally uh, I like to put that as a half. And let's hit save. And guys, sometimes if you have problems with proxies, just Go into that part and click half and it's going to make things work most of the time. All right, so let's right click here and import some media. But before we do that, let's make a new bin. So hit new bin. Let's call this videos. Click on videos. And now we're going to import media. And guys, it's good to import all of the videos into one folder. I know it can be tempting to put a different folder for each camera, but it actually works a lot faster if we just have one. So this is my latest wedding film. You'll notice that each of these clips, the file name shows exactly which camera it's from. So I've got A7S III here, a bit further down. I've got A7 IV, and here I've got B A7S III, so I know it's my second A7S III. So even though it's all in the same folder, I know which camera is from which. I've got a few from a A7C at the bottom. Hit open. It's going to ask me if I want to change the project frame rate. I'm going to say, don't change. Uh, because I've got a lot of clips at 100 frames per second, but I want to stick with 24 frames per second, or you could use 25 if you prefer. By default, uh, DaVinci chooses 24 for us. Right, so... I'm just going to get rid of most of these clips because... I don't need them. So... Currently, these are all 100 frames per second clips. I love shooting at 100 frames per second, personally. But what we're going to do now is change the clip attributes um, and put it down to 25. Now everything is going to be in slow motion. And what I can do is right click and click Generate Proxy Media. And guys, that's my recommended workflow. It's just keep everything in one folder, select it all, and just hit generate proxy media once. Then you're going to have to go and let your computer deal with it. But if you do this the night after your wedding, you can have all your proxy media done. And basically, it's going to save you a lot of time just faffing around. If you make all sorts of different folders and then you start trying to attach proxies for each different folder and then making proxies for the files you missed, that's how I, I first tried to do it. 
because my camera can record proxies at 25 and 50 frames per second, but it doesn't for 100 frames. But that process is very convoluted. You have to keep coming back to the computer to see if it's done it. And ultimately what I found most easiest is just to create proxies for everything all at once and then just go have a break, you know, let the computer do the work, do it in the night before you go to sleep, in the morning, all those proxies are going to be made for you and you're ready to go. All right, guys, so I'm just keeping this fast and simple by having only a few files here. Obviously, it's going to take you a bit longer to create all your proxies, but my computer has done that in a minute or two. And now we're going to drag these files into the timeline here. And you see we get an image. We can scroll through the timeline. I'm going to zoom out. And this is a shortcut I've put on my mouse. But you can also use plus and minus, equals and minus. So we can scroll through our footage. All of this is shot in log. And if I press play, you can see it's all in slow motion. All right. So guys, let's have a little look at the basics here. Here we have the inspector. We can click inspector and it goes. I'll click it again and it comes back. I can adjust this a little bit because I've only got one layer. I can have a bit of a bigger image, which is nice. And here I can do some basic functions and it's all fairly self-explanatory, guys. So I don't really need to show you, but look, we can zoom in and out. We can change the position. We can rotate. We can crop if we want to put some bars in at the top and bottom. So those are the tools that we can use in the inspector. Slide that along. We've got the audio mixer here, but guys, we don't really need to use that for the moment. I can switch that off. There is a whole nother page about audio here, which is a bit more useful. And so here we've seen the way we organize the files. We can also see images of them by clicking here. And guys, once you've got all your files there, you can make sure by clicking date modified that they're in the right order. If they're out of order, just hit that. Make sure you got the lowest one first and then they're all gonna be in order ready for you to drag them in. So I can get rid of the media pool by clicking here, get myself a larger screen. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, press play. And now I'm ready to start cutting down this video. But guys, we're going to talk about using the shortcuts to start trimming in the next video. Before we move on to that, let's have a look at some of the other things we've got here. We've got effects. For wedding films, there's not too many effects that we'll use. We can use cross dissolve, classic, but we'll need to give ourselves a little bit of space. So we can do a dissolve like that. We can drag it out a little bit. And that's pretty much the only transition that I would use, apart from maybe a dip to black. Which will just go, here we go. All right, fun times, guys. Uh, we've also got titles. We want to put a bit of text on. 
quite a few options here. Let's do a fade on. Let's try a fade on. And then to edit this, we might go back to the inspector and type first wedding film. And let's go back to here. So yeah, we can change the font here and we've got all these options. That's nice and clean, that's fine. All right, so tons of titles to have a look. We've got basic title, which might be pretty useful. This does nothing. Let's get rid of that. Basic title. Um, again, click on it. Let's put some text in. Hello. All right. So we can also apply transitions to the font so I can blend that in and out. Audio transitions, crossfades. That's self-explanatory. Hopefully it's the same thing, but for audio more or less. Right, so now we've got our first bin, all the videos. Let's create another bin. And now let's make that one timelines. So now we can access timelines. Create new timeline. Let's call this one short. So I can go into timeline one from here, copy them, go to short, click paste. We're going to go over those shortcuts next time. And so I've got another timeline. So guys, here is where we get to the different timelines at the top. Hey guys, so I wanted to cover a couple of points that have tripped me out in the past. The first one is about saving your backups. Now, I was surprised this setting isn't automatic on DaVinci, and I was surprised that nobody told me in all the training materials that I did that that's not the case. And I didn't find this out until I made a wedding film and it crashed, and it was near the end and there was no backups. Absolute disaster. So happy to share this trick with you now. <laughs> so DaVinci does have an auto save function and it hardly ever crashes. And I made about 10 films without any issue. And then just one day it did crash. So make sure you've got backups selected as well as the auto save. To do this, we're gonna go to the preferences, head over to user, Project load and save, and just make sure project backups is clicked on. Now, live save is automatically selected, but project backups you'll need to select, put a folder, choose your amount of time you need to backup. You're hardly ever going to need to use this, guys, because as I say, it's DaVinci is very reliable, but make sure it's selected in case of emergency. And once you've done it once, it should load up like that every time. I only had to click that once and now it's fine. And there's one other thing I wanted to show you guys. When you're copying and pasting between timelines, I'm gonna press copy. I'm gonna to go to the short one. If I just press paste now, nothing's gonna happen. You have to click on the timeline and paste. Just a small thing. If you've not clicked on it, it won't paste. And sometimes I've been confused as to why it's not pasting. But there you go. Now you know. And guys, just a note about structure and the process. Normally what I would do is once I've imported all my video from the wedding and brought it onto the timeline, I would go over to timelines, create a new one and 
do one for speeches and create a new timeline for the ceremony. And then basically cut out all those bits and put them into the timeline. Some more speeches. Um, here's the ceremony clips. So I'm just doing this very roughly to show you. So I've cut all that stuff out. And now I can concentrate on the highlight without editing those other bits. That's just how I work. You guys are free to work in your own way. But yeah, the next step would be to basically do a color, a basic color space transform if it's your first time or apply your no tree if you're more experienced, that'll make sense later. And then we're going to look at using the shortcuts to cut this all down into a nice highlight. But before then, we're going to look at making the simple color space transform. So when you do edit this down, you can see the clips better. So before we go into cutting down the image with the shortcuts into a highlight film, we may want to see the images a bit better. And to do that, we may need to do something called a color space transform, which means we take the log footage and we convert it into Rec. 709. So to do that, we're going to go over to our color page, which is this little color palette here. Head over to effects, search here for color space transform, drag it across here. Now the input color space and input gamma is going to depend on your camera. Because I'm shooting in Sony S-Log3, input gamma is going to be S-Log3, input color space, S gamma 3 dot cine. Output color space, we're going to go down to Rec 709. Output gamma, we're going to go to gamma 2.4. And guys, I'm going to do a little bit of a dip to the colors because I'm shooting at 1.7 because with Log in Sony, it captures more detail in the highlights. So I'm going to tend to need to bring down the image a little bit. So I'm just going to leave that as a basic curve. Um, obviously, it's far from finished. But what I'm going to do is press Control C, copy that. And then I can apply that to the rest here and to this side. Now all these clips have a basic color grade. So when I go back to my edit page, I can see what I'm doing a little bit better and that might help me choose the clips. Obviously that's not the final color. We're gonna go into that shortly. That's just the first step before we start doing the editing. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope that all makes sense. Feel free to watch this again. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go into shortcuts. That's going to explain a lot more information. Um, a lot of the functions in, up here, for example, in edit, we're basically going to learn how to do that with shortcuts. It's going to be a lot faster than clicking through in that manner. All right, guys, see you soon. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.